All right, everyone, again, my name is Carlos Molina. I represent several entities, and the one we're gonna be talking about today is Project Cars. And um, we'll talk about how that was established, why Project Cars, and how it came to be. Whoa. So this is gonna be uh, our agenda for today. Yeah. You wanna do the head? Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're okay. This is the agenda, and uh, we'll see all that in the presentation. Come on, it's sinking. Doing a lot of thinking. Probably like too much graphics. Maybe. <coughs> So while it goes into the next slide, it's the mantra that I live by. When, when I was in high school and when I was in college, I, I did a lot of things that were exceptional. So I had this mentality of being like an elitist. You know, I was in certain groups and certain athletics and you know, varsity and, and different types of debating and went to state and all that. So I had this, big head going into college and um, and then going into the military uh, as an officer I had a you know, bigger head because I was in like elite units and so forth and to me that was a big mistake because I, I closed myself off and I really didn't help out other people that probably needed help and then once I got into the real world uh, I did a lot of research and I would research stuff that I, that I liked and, and I ended up liking this guy by the name of Zig Ziglar. Some of you guys have heard of him. Phenomenal about sales. If you pick up some of his books, it's great. And and and, and this is the mantra that I try to live by now. I try to I try to help out as many people as possible because to me, the more people I help out, the closer I'm going to be to my goals. And, and and this is a quote from Zig Ziglar: "You can get everything in life you want if you would just help enough other people get what they want." And, and you'll see how I, I've done that throughout the years in the different aspects of my career. All right, so this is me in a nutshell, and that's right there described in, whenever you have time to read it. The bottom line is uh, I went to the University of Texas and I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree. I was also an ROTC, so I became an officer. I did counterintelligence in Bosnia, South Africa, uh, South America, Europe, and so forth. Uh, after after my stint overseas and wearing civilian clothes, came back, was an officer for White Sands Missile Range. I was a commander. And then that's when I started going back to what I call my roots, which is cars. And I believe cars are my roots because that's something I've always wanted to do when I was a kid. Uh, there's a street called Railroad that connects the northeast of my town to the base. And when I was five years old, we are driving down that road, my dad goes, what are you gonna do when you grow up? And I said, I, I, I wanna be a scientist. And he said, well, why do you wanna be a scientist? And I said, because I wanna build cars. I didn't know, I was five years old. And uh, it wasn't until, gosh, I, I believe 2005, when I'm standing in front of my garage, and I got, it was a three car garage, and I had like one third of the garage is full of tires, like all sorts of tires, drip tires, 18 inch tires, 20 inch tires, the other middle was all full of all audio equipment, and then the other side was full of paint and accessories for cars, because I was building cars for SEMA, and I was doing this on my own. Uh, and so we'll get into what SEMA is and all that, but this, this is me in a nutshell and, and what I do. Okay. So, I've built over 250 vehicles for SEMA booths. And SEMA, Special Equipment Manufacturers Association, it's like the biggest expo in the world for cars. It's held in Las Vegas the first month, first week in November, and there's over 2,000 booths. And a booth can have anywhere from one to 20 vehicles. And the space for a booth is 1995 square foot. If you're a math major, a booth for, a car, for two vehicles runs you about $20,000 just for the space. All the other entrances and connections and cleaning and all that, you end up spending fifty thousand dollars for a boot. So this is a big, big deal for the automakers and anybody that makes aftermarket parts for for cars or trucks. Uh, like I said, I, I you know was in the military. I received a soldier's medal when I was in the military for saving somebody's <coughs> life. I have a, a master's in project management, chemical engineer degree. 
And uh, I do social media, we're gonna talk about that too. You gotta have social media. I reach about too many people on social media. And I've been a fan of Spawn since 1992 when it first came out. And these are some of the vehicles we did in uh, two years ago at SEMA. Those are some of the guys in my group. And again, that was a show we did in California. Project Cars is an organization that I help people get their cars to this level. I'm willing to talk about it. And this is my resume on a PowerPoint presentation. Graduated from college in 94. That's when Project Cars concept was born. And after college, I went to Panama. And then that's when I started designing vehicles. Uh, when I was in Panama, I found out that it was very hard just to get uh, parts for vehicles. So I established an, an intro lab within the military organization and allowing soldiers to purchase uh, parts for their vehicles at no cost, at no upcharge. Since I was an officer, I was gonna make money off of you know privates and so forth. So it was just a fun little web thing. And then that's when I started finding out about SEMA. And then you know, I got out of the military in 2002. I started working as a project manager for Donald Chrysler, which is Chrysler and started getting more involved into SEMA builds and doing a lot of shows out of town. I even, one, one time I, I left work from the plant in St. Louis at four o'clock and drove stick straight to Toronto and did a show the very next day. I arrived at three o'clock in the morning, washed down the car and then the car was in the boot. I didn't get to sleep till the very, very next day where we did a photo shoot and I drove back and I made it in time to go to work on Monday. Uh, so you can get Toronto to St. Louis. And then uh, I also did international sales with Expedex. And when I was with Expedex, that's when I really started learning about sales and relationships and building relationships and maintaining a strength with, with the customer client relationship. And I got into guys like Gitmore and Zig Ziglar and so forth. And then I went to work for Northwest Pipe as an engineer consultant. Uh, the recession hit, I had to leave Dallas, came back, Fort Bliss, Texas, where I'm a senior engineer, but I also am a marketing director for a wheel company and manage private cars. And if you guys have any questions, please raise up your hand. This is there's no script to this. Right? <laughs> I talk from the hip. Uh, so Project Cars, what it is, it's and JP is part of our one of our members. It's an organization and where we promote different products from a vast variety of different aftermarket companies, from wheels to turbos to wraps to body kits or whatever. And what I do is I help guys that want to get their cars to a totally different level and get more exposure, get magazines, go to shows, and get their cars to a lot of level. I don't charge them anything. I just require that they buy a hood prop and two t-shirts and then help out when they go to shows. And in the end, they end up having cars with $30,000 up to $60,000 in modifications. And so it also, the title, yeah, is there a way to make it smaller? Uh, I don't know. Anybody know how to make it? It's not fitting, it's not fitting on, this title's not fitting on. Okay. Well, anyways, this it should say it's starting with the But anyways, the first, the first vehicle that I took to SEMA was uh, BMW E46, and that's how I was known in SEMA, and how I started to get acquiring a lot of different sponsors. Because at that time, not many people were building BMWs. They're either building muscle cars or you know the Hondas, and that's when the huge you know Fast and Furious hit, and you had a Honda or you had a, a Mitsubishi Eclipse, and, and that was the majority of the vehicles that were at SEMA get modified. And these are some of the magazines that the cars would come out in. So, this is uh, some of the timeline at SEMA. And one of the things, another, not a mantra, but something you always keep in the back of your mind is you have to know your capabilities, know what you're capable of doing, and then whenever you're talking to somebody what you're gonna do, you always, 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 always wanna over deliver what you promised in the first place. And the example that I like to give when we get to this slide is when, when I first started talking to Advani was back in 2014, when they, they first transitioned uh, from Italy to the US. 
and we had, and I had already put in their sister company for Koenig Wheels USA. And uh, I had already done several vehicles for Coney Wheels booth at SEMA. And so, you know, the first time we started talking to them, it wasn't until 2015 when I had my wife's F-150, which is that one over there, uh, wide body F-150 lifted, eight inches, a big, that's her truck. Anyways, when we had that vehicle in the booth, I actually got to talk to Raymond, who's uh, the CEO at Bonnie Wheels, and talk to him about our, our sponsorship program. He was very, very interested. I sent him a proposal, I think, in April of 2016, and he provided us the funds to fund part of the tour with, with his wheels. So, a whole pallet shows up in my house, six sets of wheels for my guys, uh, a booth so we can promote their product, and money for the logistics of, of the booth. So, okay, great. Most people would get that and be happy, and, and that's it. Well, we always take things to a different level. I tell my guys, you know, we're away from California, so we have to do three times as much as what the guys in California are doing. So we did videos, we did pictures, we did photo shoots all on our own. Um, I asked Raymond if I can get into his Facebook and I started providing content in a Facebook that no one's touched since 2012, so you can imagine how many likes they had. And, uh, and I started putting videos in there, of, you know, updated his uh, YouTube account. So I did all this stuff. Nope, it wasn't in the contract, I just did it because I could and I had the content. Three months later, I'm going, I'm driving my Mustang to get a new set of tires and I get a call from Raymond and he asked me, he says, he says hey, you know, we're thinking about hiring a marketing director uh, for, for the company since we don't actually have one. And in my head, I started thinking of like three different guys that I can name off the top of my head that are in the in the Corona LA area that would be perfect for the job. So I'm like, you know, Manu's really good, blah, blah, blah. This guy's really good. And Raymond goes, no, 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 you don't understand. I want you to do what you're doing, but for us. And I told him, I said, Raymond, you do understand the reason I'm in Texas is because of my parents. I'm not going to leave Texas. He's like, no, no, you do everything you can from Texas, but we want to hire you. So I, a position was created, and I started being the marketing director for Avani Wheels because... I did more of them than what they normally would expect. And so uh, this slide is how the whole process goes when uh, doing a build for SEMA, which is a really, really big thing because what happens at SEMA is these companies pick certain vehicles to represent them not only at SEMA, which is the largest uh, automotive expo in the world, but that vehicle is basically going to be the face of that company for a whole year. So the way we start is we do a rendering of the vehicle. And this is one of the renderings we did with one of the Mustangs. Larry's Mustang. Yes, Larry's. And then these are different renderings that we've done uh, in the past. We had a Mustang that you know, was going to be a Luke Skywalker Mustang, an FRS, an F F250, and then that's a Camaro, a white body Camaro. So these concepts, or these are actually ones you ended up doing as well? Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, the, like, the Spawn Mustang started off as, as a rendering. We'll see it later on. And then these are some of the, another thing that, you know, going above and beyond, uh, we do our own photo shoots and then we submit those photo shoots for advertisements or we submit those photo shoots for print. And what that does, it gives more exposure for the uh, advertiser or the sponsor. And then they don't have to hire somebody for a thousand bucks to organize this whole photo shoot where we did it on our own. Yeah, again, adding value that they don't expect. More advertisements from F-150, 370Z, BMWs. And these are different magazines that the car, this is the Mustang that I was talking about. <clears throat> when we first started doing Jeeps back in 2012, you know, we've been in Japanese magazines, uh, local and national magazines, German magazines. And then that's my wife, I'm proud of that. She's a nurse. She's a nurse. <laughs> She's a nurse. And uh, she, uh, I, I do a lot of traveling. And so my wife, bless her heart, she always wants to help out when, and she, you know, she doesn't want to be away as well. Because I mean, if you marry somebody, you, you want to be with them all the time. Bottom line. So she comes with me to shows and she would, you know, be the quote unquote model for the booth and, you know, talk about the wheels or talk about whatever we were promoting that day. And then she got selected on several times to, 
would be in a magazine. And so, yeah. And oh, so yeah. these are different vehicles that we've had and seen over the years. The Jeep M4, that's the my beginning BMW that uh, started everything off in 2000. This is what a truck looks like now, wide body Camaro. That's a Wolverine slash Deadpool uh, GT350. More vehicles for truck again, a lower truck, Mercedes, BMW, FRS, and other vehicles. So these ones on the bottom, what, 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 if, what was done on them? Okay, this one, uh, we did the very first lowering kit for the F-150, put 24 inch, no, 26 inch wheels, uh, leather interior, changed out the whole front end, uh, different hood, <clears throat> added a tunnel cover in the back, exhaust system tuned, upgrade to the turbos, and downpipe. <clears throat> the Mercedes, not much was done. Not much was done, just a lift kit, ECU two wheels, tires, exhaust. <clears throat> the wide body BMW was the first. I should fall water. I have some, I've been oh. looking at it, but you can have it if oh. you want. Oh, gosh, thank I don't have any that I know of. Well, I think I have more than you would have. <laughs> Okay, so this BMW, that's one of my, that was one of my BMWs. First wide body E92. This was actually built in 2010. Full upgrade turbos, downpipe, intercooler, uh, exhaust system, gutted out the interior, carbon fiber everywhere, carbon fiber race seats, uh, coilovers, three piece wheels, trunk hood. Um, at that time, they had every modification that was available. And we also did some different things to the engine. Uh, just <clears throat> like the back of the canisters, we, we made them into metal instead of plastic, like it comes from the factory, chrome fiber valve cover. So this <clears throat> right here is supposed to say crazy idea. Uh, so I had this crazy idea. Like I said, I'm a big, big fan of Swan. In the year that we did um, the Deadpool, we didn't get permission. We just did it and, and went to see a lot of people saw it and they're like, ooh, did anybody ask for a license agreement? I was like, well, what's a license agreement? <laughs> Learned really quick. And so the next year I was like, look, the song came out in 1992. They're coming on the 25th anniversary. Wouldn't it be great to do a new Mustang with the Spawn logo? And so this is the rendering. And someone twisted Todd's arm and he allowed us to do it. So, oh, sorry. Oh, not me. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you guys know who Tom McFarlane is. We do now, because we've been in shots of him. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he was, he was a, a big, big influence on, on myself and a big calming for my life back in 92 when I was you know, finishing college and, and then going into the military and kind of intelligence, which ties into a lot of the things that, he's, that Spawn did, like covert missions and stuff. And so I really can relate to the story. So I've always liked his art as well. And so that's the reason why we approached um, the Fermi group to see if we could do a Spawn vehicle. And then some more information on Todd and what we wanted to do with the Mustang. And so this was the, the final rendering of what the vehicle was gonna look like. And so last year it was gonna debut at Amazing Comic Con in Las Vegas. And not only did we debut the Spawn Mustang, we also debuted a Jeep and a GT350. And they were a big hit, at, well, I thought, at the, at the convention. And they already started to come out in magazines. And that's the rendering for the Jeep. And this, this slide, I wanted to show everyone's responsibility to make the whole thing happen. Because this is, again, this is something new that no one's ever tried before. But we wanted to make sure that everyone was happy, there was no licenses you know, being violated, and you know, we'd have an end product in time for uh, the unveiling at uh, Las Vegas Comic Con. And so, okay. This is the modification list on the Mustang, and we did this within three months. Yes? How much power did it make with the Whipple on there? Uh, with the Whipple and the Cooks, 
catalytic, we'll see, what, Clix has uh, catalytic converters mm -hmm. that are not catalytic converters. Yeah. So we had that in SCT2, it was 804, I believe. Yeah, just so you know, if you give, this, if you give, you, give him your car to fix, it won't pass emissions. <laughs> <laughs> we found that out the hard way. <laughs> but he came back and fixed it. So. <laughs> the tube, like, the, the tube, oh. because uh, Jake's car had a tube prior to, and we put a different intake. The tune was working with this cod intake before, and we put an AEM intake because it looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it kind of screwed things. I didn't think it would. I mean, it's just you know, one intake to the other, but. Oh. I was like, cool, you have a car, you just can't drive it now. <laughs> but it looks good, it's all good now. And this is all the stuff in the Jeep, which is one of the first 2017s with a supercharger as well. And then this is the poor CRX. Beautiful story. So my, I've been looking for a CRX, and for you guys, you guys know how hard it is to find a CRX SI. I've been looking for one for one for 10 years. It was in October, about two years ago, my wife says, put on a blindfold, we'll put on a blindfold, we'll go outside, cherry CRX. I mean, cherry, just beautiful, no dents, nothing. The interior's in there, and that was my birthday present. I invested $18,000 into it. The day that we did the alignment, one of my guys, Dustin, uh, drove it for the test run after the alignment. As he was coming back around, some teenager from came off the interstate, screeching, hit him on the side, made him flip and roll into a ditch and destroy the car. And that's why we had that. <laughs> so, so my wife, being 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 how she is, she I, I was. I was literally almost at a depression. I mean, that's how bad it was. Because I feel so bad. My, my, my wife takes a long time to find this car, pays a grip for it, and then, you know, once it's done, it gets destroyed. So I started doing renderings of the Jeep, and, and I guess you saw them, because like two days later, we're driving down Montana in El Paso, and I'm like, where are you going? She's like, oh, don't worry about it. I just want to take a different ride home. She pulls into a Jeep dealership, and I look at her, she's like, we're getting you a Jeep. And I'm like, okay. So we got a Jeep, I made some calls. Three days later, I had six pallets worth of parts. We put the, get the Jeep together, and five weekends, and then had it at uh, Amazing Comic Con. It was really cool. It, when you see the Jeep, you're like, no way. But yeah, it's like <laughs> fully decked out, supercharger, lift, every, the whole interior was gutted, you know, uh, Lamborghini seats. It, it, it's really cool, and all my guys came together to make it work. So this is normally what our schedule looks like. Uh, this is our schedule, I think, uh, 2017, but we added a lot more Comic-Cons in there, and, and we did a lot of, we don't really list the local shows, but I do about 32 shows a year on the weekends. I live in El Paso, so even coming out to Phoenix is like 600 miles. So we also go to Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, sometimes Colorado. Oh, and here's the Jeep. We call it the Violator. Violator is a nemesis to Spawn. And so, I mean, we even decked it out with chain. It was supposed to be like Spawn incarnate in the Jeep. So you got spikes everywhere. And these are really sharp spikes. You know, machine guns. And, and this is one of the magazines that just came out. And so here's a supercharger. Here, here. This was actually uh, the day after SEMA was over this year. Okay. And then it was a <clears throat> it was a six page article that just came out. So we got more articles coming out. And then Todd signed it. The actually that's an oak armor fender that's now sitting in my garage. And then I took off the hood because he signed the hood too, so that's gonna sit in my garage too. So these are what I consider my pillars of success. And, and what I try to, have when I do stuff that relates to business or business relations or <clears throat> mostly my life in general, um, always be a service. If you can help somebody out, do it. And don't do it because you think something else is gonna happen in the future, you know, in the future, just do it. It makes you feel good. I mean, I love helping my guys out, you know, building their vehicles. It's, I like seeing it get built. 
All this stuff, I'm sorry, all this is in the notes that I gave you, so you don't have to write it down. <laughs> uh, organize your day in a 24 hour period. I mean, the more organized you are, the less time you're gonna have to slack, the less time that you're gonna have to waste. Because you don't want, you have a lot of energy right now. And you wanna use as much of that energy as possible. Because the more, the older you get, the more things are gonna be compiled on you, and the harder it's gonna be. But if you start getting organized now, it's gonna be a lot easier for you in the future. That changed it. Stop watching TV. So one of, one of the things I like to talk about when I'm in an elevator is I ask people, you know, what's your favorite show? And they tell me, like, ah, Game of Thrones. So I'm like, okay, so how much time do you watch Game of Thrones? They're like, ah, about a, an hour a week. So I'm like, okay, an hour a week. So approximately 50 hours a year. So they're like, yeah, how long have you been watching Game of Thrones? Oh, about four or five years. So on average, about 400 hours you've been spending watching Game of Thrones. They're like, yeah. What have you gotten out of it? <laughs> They're like, oh, it's a cool program. Okay, got that. But what have you gotten out of it? Most people don't know what to say. 400 hours you can get an accreditation on, on anything that you're doing online. 400 hours you can spend reading a book of whatever you're gonna be destined to do. Or read the Ziggler. 400 hours, and that's just one show. So. I stopped watching TV like in 2002. Yes. You watch like sporting events at all or no? If I go to the sporting event, yes. So you won't watch like anything on TV, like football games or nothing? Only if I go to my parents' house and my dad is chilling out and I'll chill out with him. Cool. Yeah. And, but, but that's just me because right. that's what I've decided to do. Because 24 hours is not enough in a day. Right. And if I'm sitting down on a couch, and I'm not doing something, I get edgy. And it's just something that I train myself to do. I mean, I love watching MMA, but if I'm gonna watch MMA, I'm gonna go watch it. You know? Or like record it and watch it while I'm on the flight. But like I said, that's what I do. I mean, if you, if you start limiting your TV now, you're gonna see that it's really not conducive to be productive in your life. Create goals with deadlines and milestones. What that means is, if you got an overall goal to be a mechanical engineer in the future, you know, create when you want to you know, finish certain courses, when you want to finish certain accreditations, and then reach those during the time period that you have. If you don't reach it, then you just gotta ask yourself, why did I not reach it during that time frame? What was I doing wrong? Figure it out, correct it, and then so you can reach the next milestone and then you can reach your goal. And then last, plan for the worst. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Perfect example is this morning. And this is why I love my wife. So this one, every time that, I, that I'm gonna go somewhere, I, I do everything two or three days prior. This presentation was corrected on Sunday. Everything that I have for you guys was packed before on Monday. I had, I had this press, my pants press. Every, she was ready to go uh, and my flight was at 